Hello. Welcome to another edition of the Bibliophiles. Before I get started, I would like to give a uh, brief lesson on the theory of relativity. Essentially, uh, a small part, a part of it is um, talking about the speed of light and how the faster an object goes and it becomes closer to the speed of light that uh, <clears throat> there becomes this time dilation effect that, um, that time uh, slows down for the people on the ship so while like a few days could go by on the people on a, on the ship going close to the speed of light that <clears throat> yeah that you know entire years could go by on any planet or anybody that isn't going anywhere near the speed of light. Why do I talk about this? Well, the following, the entire next book is revolved entirely around this. It's um, To the Stars by Lafayette Ronald Hubbard. <clears throat> um, it, it centers around um, the protagonist Alan Corday, who's this uh, like top of the line engineer who's supposed to um, <clears throat> go off to Mars and and you know, like work there for a little bit. Afterwards, he would come back and you know get married and all that other stuff. And then, but then he's t uh, kidnapped and he's brought aboard the ship uh, the Hound of Justice. And he's just and he's put to work on uh, on in, on uh, the first interstellar voyage to go out. And <clears throat> at first he's he's like upset because he knows what's going to happen. You know, day, a few days are going to come by, go by for him, but entire years will go by, and you know. <clears throat> and at first he does this, and he he gets back, and he's thinking. Well, only like 15 years went by. Maybe I could still, you know, put my life back together. But, you know, uh, during those years, like an entire war happened. Um, there was revolutions. And essentially, like, um, really, like, just take a look at any of the, any decade in the 20th century so far. And, and it, and um, you'll see that a lot of stuff can happen in 10 to 15 years. So yeah, when by the time he gets back home, he realized that um, everything has just changed. Uh, you know, nothing is where it was. Uh, the so, like almost most of the people he knows are dead from the recent war. You know, just a lot of stuff has happened. And you realize that he doesn't really fit in anymore, so he signs back on to the to the Hound of Heaven to the ship, and um, the and then it just goes by like a couple years go by as he's advancing through the ranks, you know, and meanwhile outside the ship, you know, in, like whole millenniums are going by, and. Um, <clears throat> And he's realized that um, he, he can't do anything anymore because he, he was once the like the best engineer you could ever find, but then you know two ship years, as they say, uh, go by, and suddenly you know everything he knows has become obsolete, and being on the ship is now the only way he can possibly to survive or live. <clears throat> And um, yeah, this is, uh, this is really interesting and highly recommended and, and, and very recommended in my opinion. Um, what else? Um, you know, like eventually he works his way into becoming the captain, and you know he just continuing all this other stuff. Yeah, but. Uh, Anyway, uh, my personal final rating for this is 
four out of five. Mainly because I don't really get how interstellar commerce could really work like this. Like, um, why why would anybody try and commission a a trade fleet or a voyage when they wouldn't even be able to cash it in for you know best case scenario several years if not decades so you know but for the most part it was very interesting and uh you know the atmosphere of the ship and how recorded is feeling is how thousands of years are going by when to him you know only a couple years are go are going by and yeah, just, uh, it's very in enjoyable, but, yeah, anyway, uh, <clears throat> uh, till next time, uh, read a book.